the final game of this triple header number 17 UConn taking on number 24 North Carolina as we welcome you courtside once again Ryan Rucco alongside the Hall of Famer Rebecca Lobo so happy to be with you a long day at Mohegan Sun and another fun matchup to come an opportunity here for UNC bouncing back after a three-game losing streak earlier this season, and their leader continues to be Deja Kelly. Yes, the 5'8 senior has been able to get to her spot all throughout her career. And where is that spot? It's right there, the sweet spot, the elbow. And when she's there, she's effective. She can score. She's athletic, get to the rim, range out to the three-point line as well. Incredibly effective, drawing fouls, getting to the free throw line, simply a scorer at all three levels. See the numbers for Deja Kelly. Last four games averaging 17 and a half points per. Meanwhile, for Connecticut, Aaliyah Edwards has played really well after coming back from the Cayman Islands. Yeah, Aaliyah Edwards coming off her first double-double of the season. 18 points, 12 boards against Ball State in their last game. And they need so much from her at 6'2", brings it in terms of size. She's got the range out to 15 or 17 feet. Very capable passer, but the leader needs to lead for Connecticut because they've got a lot of young guys on the floor now. See the last two games, the numbers for Aaliyah Edwards it's very strong as we send things over now to another Hall of Famer, Holly Ruff. Well, for the UConn Huskies, you look at their record and say, what is going on? Three losses this early in this season. But to understand the Huskies, you've got to understand what's happening to them from an injury perspective. It has been wild. They are down four key players right now, including two starters. AZ Fudd is out for the season with an ACL tear. Caroline Ducharme extended period out. We do not know when she'll return with the neck injury. Jenna L. Alfie is out with an Achilles, and Ianna Patterson, they just announced this week, will probably be out for the entire season. Complications from knee surgery. Gina Oriana said it's just one of those kinds of years, but I will tell you what Courtney Banghart and UNC said. They still have Paige Becker and Aaliyah Edwards, and they are 70% of their scoring, so they will still have their hands full with this Husky team, even though they are short-handed. No doubt, Holly. Thank you very much. You heard the applause for Paige Beckers, as you might imagine here in Connecticut, a very heavy UConn crowd. You see the numbers for Beckers this season. Remember, the last time she was fully healthy, she was the National Player of the Year as a freshman. Gino Oriema, 39th season at the helm of the Connecticut Huskies. He's been very honest about the injuries and not only the way they've affected his team on the floor, but also the dismay he and his coaching staff and the players have felt from having to deal with them yet again. It's been a staple of recent serious seasons, as Holly detailed. And meanwhile, for UNC, Courtney Bangar has done such a nice job with this program. Three straight tournament trips. A lot of excitement going into this season. Some struggle moments early, dealing with a lot of injuries, but a team that feels they have an opportunity to beat an all-time program today. Connecticut, 37-1 and all-time in this building. The only loss a couple of seasons ago to Louisville as Edwards tips it back. Must be able to flag it down, though, for UNC. Crowd will stand here until Connecticut scores. As this functions as a de facto home game for the Huskies. Kelly's pull up. He is good. There you go. There's the mid-range. So good there. And Connecticut with a small lineup. This is a lineup they started their last game for the first time this season. You see today's starting lineup brought to you by Invesco QQQ. Essentially, Paige Beckers is the four with this lineup. Edwards can't hit, and the rebound tilts out of bounds to North Carolina. Here's UNC's Invesco QQQ starting lineups. Lexi Donarski coming off a huge performance, scoring 22 points, six of eight from three last time out. Kelly gets it away to Indian Navarre. 
Down low, Usby traveled, and UNC turns it over. But that's something that North Carolina worked on in their practice last night. They really feel like Usby will have the advantage because of the small lineup that UConn is running, that she will have a smaller defender on her and can post them up. Edwards just dropped it there into the lap of Deja Kelly. Pushing pace for UNC. Kelly flips it in with a left hand. Deja Kelly scores the first four points of this game. Here's Beckers. But if Connecticut needs to score to give these fans a chance to sit. Edwards does just that. Aaliyah Edwards has been very efficient the last couple of games. That's what we got accustomed to a season ago. Kelly gets the roll. A strong start for Deja Kelly, who listened to your scouting report on herself. I mean, how about Deja Kelly? She came out looking to score. Edwards kicks. Ashlyn Shade. No. Long rebound. Snared. By Gokden. Must be good defense from Shade. Pesky in there to knock it away. Here's Mule. Pass deflected. Arnold trying to save it. Could not. And UConn turns it over. Deja Kelly is an explosive athlete. You see her here right to left. Able to get in. Finish with the nice scoop shot. And then again, coming down left side, giving it up, get it back. What can you do? Pull up. That's what she loves to do. Mid-range, sweet spot, and she is a dangerous passer from that mid-range as well. Well, Leah Edwards checks out, dealing with a bloody nose. So what was already a small lineup, maybe gets a little bit smaller with Aubrey Griffin at the five. Edwards, the projected number five pick in the latest ESPN WNBA mock draft. We saw... The lottery leading into this. Congratulations to the Indiana Fever with the number one overall pick. The one advantage for Connecticut with this lineup is they certainly can switch one through five because they are all relatively small. Pull up jumper from Navarre, won't go, and Usby is fouled on the attempted rebound by Nika Mule, first personal on Mule. Gino Oriama was telling his team this morning, all of you are rebounding today. We have to rebound as a team because they are giving up so much size inside. Kelly. Peering in. Fishing out. Donarski. Tend to shoot. Usby fires it. Taken by Griffin. Third turnover already for North Carolina. Arnold. Jitters into the paint and gets the whistle. K.K. Arnold, a quick first step, and will go to the line to shoot two. This particular Connecticut lineup can have an advantage if they play fast. We just saw them with a really nice defensive stop and then pushing the other way. Doc Dang whistled for the personal, her first. And UNC quick huddled up. I don't understand why, why do you have to have rebounds? Like, they made him put rebound. If a coach wants to have all her players out, I get, I understand it's a rule, but it, well, they shouldn't have to be in, but especially I, on the first shot. No, no. We're, I, I'm going to disagree with you, partner, because it serves then as Edwards gets ready to check back in as a timeout, right? Because you're able to quick communicate something to your entire team, and and, and it's going to lengthen the game because then every time you're trying to get five players back down there. So does a monitor review, and we have plenty of those usually. They serve a bigger function. One could beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> Knocked out of bounds and another chance here for Connecticut. Here's Arnold. Short on a three. Edwards back in. Paper in nose. Keeping the possession alive. Beckers. Pull up jumper. Rims out. Good work by Gokdang on the rebound. Navarre spins, can't finish, knocked out of bounds, and at last hit, Connecticut. It's going to stay here with UNC. Thirteenth meeting all time between these teams. Connecticut has won five straight. UNC last beat Connecticut 
in January of 2007. Kelly splits the D, lost the ball. And then Arnold is fouled as Beckers hit the deck. Fourth turnover from UNC. Deja Kelly was calling for the on-ball screen, able to split it so well. Must be whistled for the personal her first. Deja Kelly, the senior guard from San Antonio, Texas. All ACC first team each of the past two years. Deckers. Mule lets it fly. No. Good battle on the boards with Edwards and Gokdang. And hold on a second. The officials are going to confer. And yeah. it was interesting because Aaliyah Edwards almost just seemed resigned to the call. And was like, she obviously touched it. And my Forsberg saw it, came sprinting in to change the call. Beckers slides a beautiful pass that Edwards could not handle. And are they conferring? Yeah, I think they're conferring again. Billy Smith's having a little trouble with these out of bounds to begin this game, but that's why it's a team effort. Yeah. As that clearly hits the leg of Usby. Beckers slides it in, plus the foul. A chance for three for Paige Beckers. So twice, what did we see? We've seen on-ball screens with Aaliyah Edwards and Paige get Beckers. It's the out-of-bounds play here. Really difficult to defend. How do you handle it? And no hedge out because you have to stay with Edwards. And then Beckers, a really nice job finishing with a heck of a lot of contact. Navar picks up the personal, her first. Beckers on the season, averaging 19 points. 49% from the floor, 46% from three. Projected at as the number two overall pick in the 2024 WNBA draft if she comes out. Has not committed one way or another yet, although the feeling has been she's more likely to stay than not, but that's just a feeling. Game travels, and it's the fifth UNC turnover. Right on, are we all just picking up on tea leaves out here? Yeah, I think we are, yes. That would be, that is my feeling as well. Right? Yeah. Whereas maybe the feeling would be slightly different with Caitlin Clark. It might be. How are you feeling? It's your third <laughs> game in a row. I feel really good. Okay, good. We've watched some great basketball today. Griffin stood up nicely there by Usby. Deflected Arnold. Zigzags can't finish. Edwards pushing him too strong. And a shot clock violation. Nice defensive stand there from North Carolina. And a timeout on the floor. Halfway through the first, tied at six. Halfway through the first quarter, UNC and UConn tied at six. The earliest in Connecticut's history that they've ever had three losses. Certainly UConn with their smaller lineup will extend their full court pressure. And Kelly nearly lost it. Already five turnovers from UNC. Must be into the corner. Catch fire. No good for Navarre. And Griffin the rebound. And Usby picks up her second. Must be a key player for North Carolina. And the senior... Picks up her second foul here in the first quarter. She does so many things for the team. She's a terrific rebounder, pursuing the basketball when it comes off the rim, sets screens, assists, does pretty much everything that North Carolina needs. It's a North Carolina team that has been very, very good on the defensive end this season. Their offense can come and go. Are they need to give Becker shots here on the foul from Donarski. Start of the try, Rebecca. Yeah, yeah, I think I that's I think that. that's three free throws for yeah. Paige Beckers. Yes, it is. Well, you talked about North Carolina. You know, this is something that we heard Coach Peck talking about as well. In general, they've been so good protecting the basketball, and early on in this game, 
five turnovers for a team that averages just 11 per game. Yes. This review isn't about foul, non-foul. That's that's not what's going on here. This is just about two or three free throws, which clearly it's three. I thought it was just to enhance my argument from earlier about getting the extra time out for the review. Well, you know what? Both teams did huddle with their coaches. They did. And of course, the offensive team can pull their players off the free throw line if they choose. So they call Usby for that foul. It is her third. Wait, hold on a second. This is clearly not Usby. That is very clearly Donarski. So that's going to get changed. The coaching staff is trying to figure it out right now with the officials and Billy Smith is assuring now this is just me trying to interpret body language from across the floor but it seemed to me Billy Smith was assuring the UNC assistants no 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 that foul was on Donarski because they were saying well they just announced Usby Donarski can't hit rebound Edwards so regardless of what gets announced at some point that will get cleaned up and Usby will just have two Shade connects on a three. When Shade makes shots, she does this like Tiger Woods fist bump that is very sweet and fresh mini. <laughs> like, yay, it, it just went in. <laughs> I did that. Demarski can't hit. Here's Arnold pushing pace for Connecticut on a 9-0 run. And turned over. Her from the fourth of the quarter for Connecticut. Ashlyn Shade, this is what she can do, is make threes and just watch her. Like, yes, mom, That's it right. went in. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. At 17 on Wednesday, into the starting lineup. Kelly trying to fend off Arnold, and that's going to be an offensive foul on Deja Kelly and the sixth turnover from UNC. Watch her right forearm here as she goes in and just kind of pushes off on KK Arnold, but Deja Kelly's been the one. She's been the one who's been effective scoring for North Carolina. Arnold, who Gina Oriema has told us is the player who is most ready to contribute defensively amongst this freshman. Connecticut relying so much more on its freshman class than they anticipated, thanks to all those injuries that Holly highlighted at the outset. Griffin got free and lays it in. Again, an instance where overall North Carolina has done good things defensively. Held UConn to 36% so far, but they're just struggling. Another turnover. And, and you could see Courtney Bangor had her arms out like, what are we doing? Yeah, that's a mystified face. Seven turnovers now for UNC. This is a team that's one of the best teams in the nation at protecting the basketball. And they've played against good defensive teams. Mika Mule gives it away. You know, Connecticut's turned it over five times themselves. Here's Kelly, low pass. Handled, the push shot won't go from Navarre. And now Mika Mule pushing pace for Connecticut. Mule who set a program assist record a season ago as Beckers has a knocked out of bounds. Hey, Tuesday on ESPN2, 22nd ranked Duke, host Hofstra at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Tune in at 7 Eastern or catch it on the ESPN app. UNC has not scored in the last six minutes and five seconds. Over their last seven and add in some missed shots. I mean, turnover. Wow! Oh, what a finish, Paige Beckers! on the diving reverse. Renaya Kelly knocks in the jumper, and that ends a 13-0 Connecticut run. 
Here's Griffin, veering, taking, missing. Rebound, Gokdang. Here's Kelly. And nearly another turnover. Salvaged by Anya Poole in the corner. Deja Kelly can't hit. Gokdang the floor rebound and a timeout taken by Courtney Banghart. We've seen Paige Beckers do a lot of exciting things over the years, but how about this finish as she takes it to the bucket, weaving through? We see you, Paige. Well, you see, UNC started three of three, and they're one of nine since. Meanwhile, Connecticut reverse started two of nine or three of four six and North Carolina had their success early all those buckets were from Deja Kelly getting good things when she was putting the ball on the floor like to see it in her in her hands and it, the points for UNC have only been scored by Kelly's Deja and Renaya Renaya with the basketball right now Caden Samuels another Connecticut freshman into the game and a whistle here against Nika Mule as she was jockeying with Deja. And that is the second foul on Mule. Nice screen set for Kelly to come off and Mule trying to fight through it, but certainly a foul. Donarski. Off to Renaya Kelly. Seven to shoot. Kelly the crossover into the paint she goes. Left it short. Got dang on the follow. 15-10. Uh, UConn lead. About a 14-second difference game in shot clock. Shade fires along two and knocks it down. No fist bump that time. I think the, the only threes are worthy of the fist pump. Right. If the foot's on the line, the fist pump stays in the holster. <laughs> Shot clock is turned off. Kelly. Taken away. Mule got to it. Edwards racing to the cup. The fling is away and just short from Renaya Kelly. That'll do it for the first quarter. Connecticut a 19-10 lead over North Carolina. Holly will talk with Courtney Banghart when we return. Well, Connecticut and Mohegan Sun, certainly a friendly place for them to play. Deja Kelly got going early, but Ashlyn Shade responded. Here's Holly with Courtney Banghart. Your team that they're not playing Brianna Stewart, Maya Moore, all the big names of UConn, but this crowd is pro UConn. How do you think they've handled that competitively so far? Yeah, I mean, it's a great environment for women's basketball. You know, six good teams here, and, and clearly it shows, right? And uh, we've got to settle down a little bit. I know we're a little beat up, but we've got to, the guys that are in have to be a little bit more settled. You have done well defensively early in that first quarter, but how do you get a little more offensive production? Yeah, I mean, I think in some cases there's a lot of contact, so we're going to have to show our hands and move through the contact so that we can get to our spots a little bit better. Thanks so much, Coach. I appreciate it. Thanks. Start of the second quarter, Ryan Rucco and a couple of Hall of Famers, Rebecca Lobo and Holly Rowe with you. As Usby is back on the floor, she sat the last five minutes of that first. Picked up two fouls and was erroneously assigned a third. As Beckers finishes over Donarski, they just fixed that. You wonder if she would have been on the floor or not. Because with too early, there's a good chance she's on the bench regardless. Yes. Connecticut has been on an extended 19-4 run. Donarski catch, fire, and hit on a gorgeous pass from Gokdang. Gokdang got triple teamed. You don't want to leave Lexi Donarski because she is North Carolina's best three-point shooter. You're all right leaving most others, but not her. 40% on the season. Edwards, quick move. Gokdang able to reject it, and it's out of bounds. Last hit Griffin. UNC basketball. 
UNC with eight turnovers in that first quarter as we send things over to Holly. You know, I talked at length yesterday with Courtney Banghart, and she's really built this North Carolina team on defense. They are getting stops, getting out. And she really says that their identity is at its best when they're moving the ball. Not a lot of dribbling like this. When they zip it, when they get back in transition offensively, they are at their best. They don't want to play against these set defenses like we're seeing in the last few possessions. Wow, yeah, Holly, because then that happens. What a rejection from Griffin, and it ends up with Beckers. Off and running for Connecticut. Beckers bounces behind Edwards in the sixth Connecticut turnover. Aubrey Griffin is an elite athlete and gets beat by a step, but can elevate. Really nice job. And then Samuels keeping the ball in bounds, saving the possession. That is short. Rebounded by Griffin. Arnold. Zipping into the paint, flips it in. <laughs> Largest lead for Connecticut and a foul here against Caden Samuels. It's interesting talking to Gino Oriema about Caden Samuels earlier. And him kind of saying, you know, she's the one freshman who you know, there's no hesitation with. She knows what she does, and she's going to go in and shoot away. That's a good paraphrasing to remove yeah. the words you can't say on TV. <laughs> <laughs> all, all positive, though. That's right. Number 41 recruit. Back thing. Whistle the pass off of Samuels out of bounds. Hey, next Sunday, catch the women's basketball showdown between the Purdue Boilermakers and number 14, Notre Dame at noon Eastern. Watch live on the ACC Network. And the app, those teams have not met since 2012. This is an in state rivalry. Donarski, good looking shot. The transfer from Iowa State. And coming up with a steal is Uspi. Seventh turnover from Connecticut. Here is Kelly. She got it. Nice response from UNC. It's a five point game. An 8-2 run from North Carolina. Beckers. Five to shoot. Beckers. Two to shoot. Beckers leaning and hitting. That possession, though, is one of the things we've seen from Connecticut more this season than in the past. A lot of standing around, not a ton of touches by a variety of players, and then Becker's bailing them out. Oh, nice lead from Kelly to Gokdang for two. But I think Kelly's looked good since coming in. been really, really good, impactful. While Becker's with 11. Arnold can't finish it. Edwards, no. Rebound, Gokdang. Usby through the traffic, and Connecticut needs a timeout. North Carolina has cut it to three. Welcome back to Mohegan Sun Arena, where Paige Becker's 11 points have helped UConn to get a three-point lead in these Points have not come easy. She's been able to finish tough shots inside, a little dupe to do to get it in as well. Mid-range pull-ups with arms right there contesting. It hasn't come easy for Paige Beckers, but she's been able to pull them through. Eight point shy of 1,000 for her career as we send things over to Holly. In that last time out, Gina Oriyama of UConn said, we have got to play more together. Too many people are standing around. I want to see us get back into better offensive flow. Let's get out in transition. Let's run in transition. He wants them to try to run some elbow action consistently until they can stop it for North Carolina. And he said, just too much standing around. Where is the screening? To his point, just four first half assists so far. 100% Holly, and there's the elbow action you're talking about, getting the entry into the elbow player, which there was Aubrey Griffin. Mule steps into a three and knocks it down. Just 
amazed at the professionalism of Holly Rowe to be able to give that report with the band bearing down on her. Truly. She had trumpets on her shoulder. Here's Usby, unable to finish on the follow. Doc Dane gets it to go. You hear Nika Mule yell out, elbow there, listen to Coach Oriana. But they still need cutters. When the ball goes to the elbow, there's usually strong side cutter going to the basket. Samuels and Mule get a little jumbled up there. Ice Brady in for Connecticut. Jab step, jumper, no. You know, Oriana talked to us today about how if Ice Brady doesn't hit her first shot, sometimes she can struggle a little with confidence. As Usby gets a second crack at it here, not shy, why not? Usby, that's one area where Courtney Banghart says she has improved as her footwork around the rim, still very good going either to her right or left hand. Good cut there, that's what you're talking about with the elbow action, and Brady fed it. No finish in on the inside from Griffin, though. Donarski. Kelly asking for Donarski to come. Hey, coming up on the Jeep Halftime Report. Chris Button and two coaches, Carolyn Peck, Stephanie White, our friends coming up. Caitlin Clark leads Iowa to a win against Wisconsin and then perhaps related, the Fever win the first overall pick. The WNBA draft, that's the cheap halftime report. Got Dang lays it in. Got Dang playing some good minutes here, and UNC has tied it at 28. Nice job going over her baseline shoulder. Samuels, no. Got Dang another rebound for eighth of the half. Here's Renaya Kelly pulling up. No. And Edwards the rebound. Bodies collide, but Connecticut retains possession. Connecticut was up by 11. And UNC has completely erased it. 21-10 was that UConn lead. Samuels hops, dishes, out of bounds. And that is the eighth Connecticut turnover of the first half. North Carolina has done a nice job holding Connecticut to only nine points here in the second quarter. Offense has not looked good. In a related note, Paige Becker's back in the ball game. <laughs> Osby stops and lays it in. UNC, its first lead since it was 6-5. Gorgeous dime from Mule to Samuels for two. Great job by the freshman to run the floor, and then Nika Mule can certainly deliver it to open teammates. That is knocked into the backcourt. Edwards after it, so is Kelly. And Kelly touched it while out of bounds, so it's Connecticut basketball. What great effort by Aaliyah Edwards. This is a 6-2 player who hard hedges, sees the loose ball, and then just dives for it. Nice job by the official. Kelly's ankle was barely, her heel was barely on it while she was out of bounds. I think that official was my force, but one of the best. Yes. Samuels checks out. So it's Mule, Arnold, Edwards, Shade, and Beckers for Connecticut. Deja and Raya Kelly, Gokdang, Donarski, and Usby for UNC. Edwards, backdoor, Beckers for two. Very effective elbow action here in the second quarter, line. That was a... Foretelling report from Holly Rowe, Deja Kelly. There's that mid range. I mean, she's money from the mid range. Deja. 
Beckers gets position, waits, and finishes. Beckers with 15 points on 6 of 7 shooting. And Mule doing a much better job distributing here in this second. Yeah, that was an outstanding post-entry pass by Mika Mule. Kelly muscling through and gets the whistle. KK Arnold thought it should have been offensive. She already baited one of those today. Leah Edwards is a terrific passer from the elbow. That time Paige Beckers went back door, able to get it, and then Nika Mule a perfectly delivered post-entry pass as Becker was posting up the smaller Donarski. That is the third foul on Nika Mule. That was on Mule. I, that's what I'm confused about as well. It looked like it was Arnold who was guarding Kelly. Now they did just switch the call. Yeah, okay. man, yeah. Well, I don't even know if it was on Arnold. But, but if it was on somebody on UConn, it was on Arnold. They did just switch it to Arnold. Rather than a phantom third foul on you. Shade. 7 to shoot. Beckers fading away. No. Rebound. Out of bounds off of Edwards, and it's UNC basketball. You've got a one-point lead. 120 to go in this second quarter. Third game of a triple header. Here at Mohegan Sun. UCLA, the number two team in the nation, beating Florida State in the opener. Number one, South Carolina, holding off number 11, Utah, in the second game. Here, number 17, UConn, a one-point lead on number 24, UNC. Kelly, great look, and Gokdang lays it in. Gokdang with a great job posting up to clear Edwards out and have that space to get the easy two. Ten rebounds, eight, 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 ten points, eight rebounds in this first half for Gokdang. Got bang. Nicely done. Here comes Navarre dipping inside and it's steered away. Beckers running the break. Bounces to Arnold who gets blocked, but Beckers there for the follow. 17 in this first half from Paige Beckers. She has 10 in the second quarter. And a one-point Connecticut lead. And a foul here as Kelly gets hit. And we'll go to the line. Becker's now two points shy of 1,000 for her career. She is the last six Connecticut points as Anaya Kelly, who's been tremendous in this first half, takes a moment. After taking a shot on the drive. Renaya Kelly averages 13 minutes a game on the season. Already 12 very productive minutes here in this first half. Is she going to play more than that today? Yes. Oh, she got smacked right in the face. Yeah. Foul given to Ashlyn Shade, her first. And Kelly misses the first free throw. He gets the second, tied at 36, shot clock turned off. Anya Poole checks in for Kelly for this final possession. Here's Mule. Over to Beckers, who's had a huge first half. Beckers posting, dishing, Edwards can't hit. And that'll do it for the first half. Fun action in Uncasville.
UConn and UNC tied at 36. Paige Becker's two points shy of 1,000 for her career and has 17 in this first half. Paige Beckers with a big time put back here after the Arnold miss. Done a little bit of everything and Beckers is with Holly. Well, Paige, this has been a very physical first half. North Carolina known for their defense. How have you been able to find your spots and be very physical with your finishes? I think just trying to get out in transition, get easy buckets. We know their half court defense when their side is very good. So we're just trying to get buckets and get easy transition. Layups, threes, opportunities before they get their defense up. You really messed up our halftime interview because if you would have scored right there, you would have scored 1,000 points, but you dished it off to your teammates. How do you balance your scoring and your unselfishness? Yeah, I think when I'm aggressive first, um, then my teammates get open, then these passes are open. So just coming out of the gate with an aggressive mentality, aggressive uh, mindset, trying to get my looks, and then everybody else will be open, I think is the key. Okay. We'll get 1,000 in the second half. How's that? All right. <laughs> All right, Paige Becker is always a fun interview. Tied at 36, UNC and UConn. Time to send things to the studio. Chris Budden, Carolyn Peck, Stephanie White have the cheap halftime report for you. When you can pass out to your three-point shooters, that's a bonus. And, of course, Paige Beckers, we've documented how she has been able to get to the spots she wants to get to since she was a freshman in stores. And she has just continued to hit shots that are well defended, has had poise, whether she's shooting in the mid-range or the post, and getting to the offensive glass in that first half as well. Beckers, two points shy of 1,000 for her career. You take a look at her shot chart. We're going to take a look at our first half stats. They are brought to you by Discount Tire. You see Beckers with the 70 points of 7 of 9 a shooting and the difference in the field goals quarter to quarter for UNC as we check in with Holly Rowe. Well, I saw both uh, North Carolina coach uh, Banghart talking to Alyssa Usby before this game started, or before this half started. She wants her to be a little bit more balanced off of her attack. I think they're sensing that they have an advantage in the post right now. And then I saw their other assistant working with Gakting to go over her shoulder and attack the shoulder of the UConn defender better. One big note, though, Renaya Kelly will not return after that hit. Here is today. Beckers laying it in for her 1,000th career point. Paige Beckers, her 1,000th career point on a running layup to open the second half. Arnold jitters and gets blocked out of bounds, but a foul. And here is our play of the game. Brought to you by Invesco QQQ. Paige Beckers with her 1,000th career point. Paige Beckers attacking the rim, getting to 1,000. Defense to offense ends up on her back. But how about this young woman? She has just been able to hit from everywhere today. I mean, today she has looked like vintage Paige, 19 points. 8 of 10 from the floor and tied for the fastest in UConn history getting to 1,000 career points. Maya Moore did it in 55 games as well. It's pretty incredible yeah. considering the number of scorers who have worn the Husky uniform. But considering the program, 11 national championships, think about all the talent in the pros throughout the years. Gokdang can't finish. The Holly with some really important information when you consider North Carolina's hopes to win this game about Renaya Kelly and being unlikely to return in this game. We saw Kelly take a shot to the face at the very end of the first half on a drive, and Kelly was so impactful once she came in off the bench. A shade misfires on a three. Rebound flagged down by Donarski. Especially since Kayla McPherson is out for this game. She has played lead guard for them in seven games this season. Back iron, no. On the three from Navarre. <laughs> Paulina Paris also out for UNC. Here's Arnold. She got it. On a three. KK Arnold, who entered this game just three of five thus far this season from downtown. 
Now Becker's on the steal. Becker's lays it in. Connecticut certainly with a different intensity and defensive energy to start the first two minutes here of the third quarter. Paige Becker scooping it through. This young woman now has 1,002. Get a chance to take a look one more time at Paige Becker's 1,000th point. Came off a steal from KK Arnold, just going the other way. Beautifully done. How hard with Paige Beckers was running the floor. 21 points on 9 of 11 from the floor, and she ties Maya Moore for the fewest games in program history to reach 1,000 career points. Zanarski can't hit. Good start to this third for Connecticut. An 8 0 burst out of the gates. Decker slings it. Mule. You bet. That was a really nice assist. Paige Beckers has looked terrific tonight. Now coming down, forcing a steal. Beckers on the floor with it, and the possession arrow belongs to Connecticut. It's all about getting the ball to the open shooter, and here wraps it around. I mean, that is a tough pass, but delivers it right on the money from Yule. Big performance thus far for Paige Beckers as we check in with Holly Rowe. Well, you see the joy that Paige Beckers is playing with. 584 days she went without basketball. And for a young woman who doesn't just love basketball, she lives basketball. It was pure torture. Getting back on the floor, this is such a privilege for her, and she is soaking up every second. You see the joy in her play, celebrating to the crowd and celebrating with her teammates. Yeah, Holly, and, and it's, it's such a good point. And I think it's helped her even be able to deal with the adversity Connecticut has had to deal with when it comes to the injuries. We talked with Paige at Texas last weekend before the Longhorns beat the Huskies and about, you know, what's this feel like for you? You guys thought you're finally going to be healthy and now AZ Fudd done for the season. Caroline Ducharme, we don't really know when she's coming back. They already lost a couple of bigs. And now Alfie and Patterson, she said, you know, being out that year, taught her to have perspective and to be just grateful that she's on the floor able to play the game she loves she said it also taught her how to keep those players involved realizing what she liked while she was out what she experienced as an injured player one of the hardest things when you're injured is not feeling a part of the team and so she said in particular when it comes to az fudd and do charm she's going to do the best she can to make sure they still have that feeling of being involved there's Shade fading. No. Rebound taken on the run by Uspie. Uspie sees a seam, dashes inside. What a rejection. But then the follow is good. Paige Becker's looking at her teammates like, why didn't anyone go get that yeah. basketball after my beautiful block? That's got to be Paige's most ferocious block of her career. Mule, short. Becker's getting in the way of Navarre. Oh, Deja Kelly separates, can't finish. KK Arnold and Deja Kelly have been going at it all game long, but a very physical defensive matchup. Look at Paige Becker's coming from the weak side, elevates, long arms. And then afterwards, like, <laughs> how come nobody went and got that for me? <laughs> Seven-point Connecticut lead. Under six to go in the third quarter. Final game of a triple header here at Mohegan Sun. Donarski, nice move. Just left his short. Aubrey Griffin in off the bench for Connecticut. Falls in the rebound. Edwards getting a breather for the Huskies. Arnold jitters, dishes, traveled before she did. Hey, December 19th on ESPN2. Catch some more hoops action with the women's Jumpman Invitational matchup between these number 24 UNC Tar Heels and the Oklahoma Sooners at 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central.
Rebecca, what do you think about Connecticut and the small lineup they are playing for a second game in a row? I think it can be really good when uh, when they can make it have their defense turn into offense. We've seen some opportunities for them to get steals and pushing the other way. You know, when their offense was least fluid in the first half was the really short period of time where Aaliyah Edwards and Ice Brady were in there together, so you understand why they have gone small for stretches. And this is the, you know, the makeup of the smallest lineup we've seen without either Brady or Edwards in the game. Yeah, I don't even know who you'd consider the four. Beckers? <laughs> yeah, and that puts Griffin as the five. Yes. Shot clock down to three here. Arnold's going to have to put it up. She does. He gets denied by Kelly. And then they're going to call the shot clock violation as Deja Kelly was off to the races. And Courtney Banghart is saying, oh, just let her go. Deja Kelly says, I see your small lineup and I give you a block. Oh, yeah, she could have been off for two. Paige Beckers has been all over the place in this third quarter. Certainly has, getting it done on both the defensive and offensive end. She has three steals to accompany her 21 points and then a couple of blocks as well. You just see her getting involved, being pesty, getting all over the floor, and then this is the block. I mean, probably the play of the game. Even though she scored her 1,000th point, I think the block might be her play of the game. See, Beckers' numbers been efficient, has been... Effective on both ends. Connecticut holding on to a five-point lead, 4.45 to go in the third. Dumps it down. Gostain spins inside. Can't lay it in as Griffin tried to hang as that small ball five. Beckers banks it up and in. What a beautiful finish. Paige Beckers has made some incredibly tough buckets today. Donarski lines it up. No. Rebound on the interior and the putback is good from Navarre. Yeah, Connecticut undersized. Every player has to box out. North Carolina, really good job attacking the offensive glass. Thirteenth meeting all time between these teams. Connecticut's won five straight. Ewell shovels it out. Beckers connects. Six on 11 of 13 shooting for Beckers. The only thing she hadn't done today offensively was make a three, and here just steps into it, drains it. Yes, Ryan, she certainly looks like the player of the year we saw as a freshman. Making those WNBA GMs start to really hope she comes out. We saw the lottery earlier today, Indiana the first pick, LA the second, and Phoenix and Seattle. Inside, Gokdang able to finish. You see Beckers versus the rest of the Connecticut team. And you know that is going to be part of their story moving forward is the load that Paige Beckers has to endure because of the rest of the injury. As Edwards finishes on the interior. She comes into the game and right away you come on some elbow action. Kelly can't finish. Here comes Beckers. Beckers swivels. It out. Wasn't going to be enticed into a heat check. Here's the elbow action with Edwards. Edwards cuts through beautifully and draws the foul on Gokdang. And Marie Edwards is going to shoot a pair. The Edwards has had a relatively quiet afternoon. Only eight field goal attempts on the day. But the last two times, give her the ball on the left elbow, let her go to work. 54 46. Connecticut in front of North Carolina, 2.57 to go in the third quarter. Rebecca, if there is a, a path to the Final Four for this Connecticut team, despite their injuries, you would think it's going to go through performances like today from Paige Beckers. Maybe not 11 of 13, but where she is just by far and away the most dominant player on the floor. For the Final Four, it will have to be that. Yeah. With a heavy dose of Aaliyah Edwards as well.
Donarski loses it. Last hit. Donarski, who's perplexed, thought it had last hit Beckers. Fourteenth turnover for UNC. Their season high is 15. They're one of the better teams in the nation at protecting the basketball, but not this afternoon against Connecticut. And this small lineup. Mule works baseline to a shovel. Edwards drops it in. Ali Edwards back in off the bench and making big contributions. Navalny gets it back to Deja Kelly. Deja, 4 of 10 from the floor, and an offensive foul. That's going to be the 15th UNC turnover. Hey, tomorrow we'll have two, not one, but two Monday night football games at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. The AFC East leading Dolphins host the Titans on ESPN and ESPN Cortez. And then on ABC, Jordan Love and the Packers take on Saquon Barkley and the Giants. Peyton and Eli will be on ESPN2 breaking down both games with limited commercial interruptions. Everything is also on ESPN+. Plus. Edwards can't pop it in. Griffin does plus the foul. charge here it recently has come in the paint starting with Leah Edwards getting some good looks and then Aubrey Griffin on the offensive glass as well 7-0 Connecticut run this is their largest lead of the day it's up to 13 remember these teams were tied at the half as Griffin completes the three-point play Deja Kelly and a foul underneath is going to go against Edwards. We saw the last possession down. Deja Kelly have gotten the offensive foul on KK Arnold. You're right. That has been a fun battle to watch between those two. It's a heck of a test for the freshman Arnold as Beckers checks out. Here the ovation for Page. And a whistle here against Connecticut. UConn 37 and one all time in this building. Their only loss a couple of years ago against Louisville. They've outscored UNC 24 to 10 in this third quarter. Osby can't bank it in. Knocked back to her. Shovels underneath. Put back won't go. Osby, another chance here. Navarre left it short and knew it, but Griffin ends up with a rebound. Remember, as Holly told us, UNC without Renaya Kelly in the second half, she made such a difference off the bench in the first half. Already playing without Paulina Paris and Kayla McPherson. Edwards, deep catch, holds it high, banks it in. Especially when Paige Beckers is out of the game. Leah Edwards needs to be the scoring anchor for Connecticut. A 10-0 Connecticut run and a foul here against Connecticut. And these two have just been banging and here in this possession, like their arms get intertwined certainly a foul there stop looking at me like that UNC in the bonus so Anya Poole is going to go to the line right, 46 seconds left in this third Poole misses the first. Anya Poole, a senior now, is part of Courtney Bangard's first recruiting class at UNC. See North Carolina, two of seven from the line as a team, and get that one to drop. 
Blackpool, the player who started over the course of the last two seasons, accepted her role this year, coming in off the bench. That free throw ended a 10-0 Connecticut run. Griffin gets it out. You were wide open. She got it. Third three of the game for Nika Mule. UNC hurrying, but the shot clock's turned off. They do get a layup as Usby lays it in. A lot of time left, though, for Connecticut to operate. Arnold step back. No, and that will do it for the third quarter. Connecticut, a big third. They outscore UNC 29-13. Holly will talk with Gina Oriema in just a moment. What a night for Paige Beckers. 1,000 career points and a whole lot more. 26 on the night so far. Well, Paige Beckers has reached 1,000 career points today and has been terrific. 26 points on 11 of 13 shooting. Moments ago, Holly Rowe caught up with Gina Oriema. Coach Oriyama, Paige Becker's getting her thousandth point, the fastest to do it, tied with Maya Moore. What are you seeing from Paige today? She seems back to kind of vintage Paige. Yeah, I mean, she's trying really hard to uh, make a lot of things happen, which I really, really like. Um, I, I like to see a lot more activity from the rest of us, you know? So it, it makes it a little bit easier on her. But, uh, you know, when she's aggressive like this and she's really, and it starts on the defensive end also, um, she just gives herself opportunities. And, you know, you see her, she scores a lot of different ways. Um, yeah, I just want to keep her, keep her in that mindset for the rest of the season. You've gone with the small lineup at times. What do you do here in the fourth quarter to kind of keep in this game and gain that separation? I think, um, I think probably we've got to play it by ear, you know. I think we've got to, we got to play to our strengths, and sometimes though we've got to we've got to go big when we have to. But my preference is to stay small. Uh, so as long as we can hold our own down there, then I like it. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. Well, so far today, you see the numbers for Beckers. Connecticut a minus eight on the glass, but that's a manageable number when you're playing as small as Connecticut is. If you're receiving all the other benefits of it, on the reverse, nice finish there from the ball and even with North Carolina in terms of points in the paint turnover here you will try to squeeze it in traffic us be busts in can't finish Griffin comes back to strong hand the rebound it gets fouled by Deja Kelly that will be the third foul on Kelly who started this game strongly first couple of buckets of the game belongs to Kelly but quiet since as Shade we still look quite ready for it. And but that's partly on Mule. Yeah, you absolutely. can't throw a pass to a player who doesn't realize the pass is being thrown. The Narski can't hit the three. Nice job by Gotting on the board of the pass, but no finish there from Usby. One of the things with Connecticut offensively this season that's been different from seasons in the past is they're only averaging 15 assists per game. Right. I mean, this is a team that's been in the top 10 for the past two decades when it comes to sharing the basketball and it's not hyperbole that is literal as Ashlyn Shade knocks in another their second three of the game and the lead is 17 for Connecticut UConn shooting the ball really well from the perimeter today 7 of 14 Meanwhile, North Carolina just two of nine from three-point range as Beckers will come and get Mule. Other than the last couple turnovers, it's like it's been a better game for Nika Mule. Mm -hmm. Who has nine points, five assists. And once again, KK Arnold and Deja Kelly. They're battling, they're competing yeah. with one another. Yeah, it's the six turnovers for Nika Mule yeah. that are the blemish in this game for her.
Into the corner. Usby will take the mid-range instead. No. Arnold stepped out of bounds. That was a well-defended possession by the by Connecticut, though. Edwards is a very capable perimeter defender when she helps out. And Connecticut will live with Usby taking a mid-range pull-up. Good atmosphere here for the final game of this triple header as Deja Kelly gets it to drop. This arena hosts a whole lot of women's basketball with the Connecticut Sun. We've had consistent success in recent years. North Carolina once again extending into the three-quarter court in terms of their pressure. Connecticut handles it better this time. In the corner, Griffin run off, loses the basketball, UNC has it. Navarre then gives it away, and it last hit Connecticut. It's going to be UNC ball. Leah Edwards, meanwhile, took a shot at some point in that scramble and ended up on the deck. She got something to the gut. The 53 Connecticut in front, a little more than two minutes to go in this fourth. All right, Rico, Rebecca Lobo, Holly Rowe with you. Appreciate you hanging out all day long for college hoops here on ESPN. As Usby couldn't finish, and now Becker's going to slow things down a bit. to go against UNC. Hey, December 19th on ESPN2, catch some more hoops action with the women's Jumpman Invitational matchup between number 24 UNC and the Oklahoma Sooners at 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central. Hopefully Tar Heels will be slightly more healthy by that point. We're fully more healthy. That would be even better. That would be wonderful. Oh, Mule and Shade once again not on the same page. Here's Edwards barreling in, gets denied by Gokdang. Loose ball, counts out to Shade, five to shoot. Shade puts it up, no, and it's out of bounds to UNC. Nice job defensively by North Carolina. 68-53, Connecticut in front. Here's Kelly, trying to turn the corner, got met by Mule, and it's out of bounds off of Kelly. It's Connecticut basketball as Mule checks her eye. Ooh, she's got a Yeah, scratch. scrape across the face. I think that's a Mule also trying to fix a contact there. Oh, yeah. Got whacked in the face by Kelly. I think a no call, though, was the right call. It's unfortunate incidental contact, but it is incidental. Beckers trapped and going to take a timeout. 6.55 to 6.42 to go in this fourth. Connecticut, a 68-53 lead on UNC. See the action earlier today. UCLA a winner. South Carolina surviving 37 from Alyssa Peely. And now Paige Beckers has been in total command. 1,007 career points tied with Maya Moore getting to 1,000 for the fewest games in program history. Do you play Scrabble? You know, I have not played Scrabble in a really long time. I was actually thinking about it the other day. I don't you know, know why. You know, be a, a loaded with points. And Vesco QQQ. That's true. I mean, there's only one Q in the Scrabble bag, but it's worth 10 points. Huh? Mule. Well, that shot looked like it went in. The crowd reacted, but it did not go in. I guess you know next time you're playing with Steve what you're going to. Yeah. <laughs> You've got it all teed up. Steve, look out. You can play QAT, husband, but I'm going to play in Vesco QQQ. <laughs> a strange optical illusion with that missed shot. Huh? Yes. I thought it went in as well. Oh, Paige Beck.
Rutgers. Another ferocious rejection. Gina Orama said it's not just about her on the offensive end, but on the defensive end as well. We've seen her get multiple steals, and now here, multiple blocks as well. Her third block. Griffin comes up with a steal. Griffin can't lay it in. Taken away by Navarro, who barrels into Beckers. It's an offensive foul. So a block at one end, and then just stepping in to take the charge wisely, impacting everything. Both ends of the floor. I guess that's still sort of the offensive end of the floor. She's just on defense. You're right. Defensively on the offensive end. Correct. Beckers has been a complete menace today. Both ends of the floor, career high, three blocks. Beckers. No. Edwards, the offensive rebound, no. Usby comes away with it for North Carolina. Kelly can't push it in. Gokdang gets whacked. And Maria Gokdang is going to shoot two after the foul on Aliyah Edwards. That will be her third. Gokdang has had a slightly quieter second half than her super impressive first half, but still making her presence felt inside. 12 points, 13 rebounds. Anya Poole in to the game for India Navarre. Gokdang, her first free throws of the day. It's the first, Holly. You know, North Carolina under Courtney Banghart is making some steady progress. Of course, they'd like it to be going faster, but she's in her fifth season. She came from the Ivy League, and many of the seniors on this team signed as her first class. I was talking to her seniors and Deja Kelly, Alyssa Usby, and they said, we believe in Coach, what she's trying to build. She's facing a really good UConn team today, but that shouldn't take away with the improvement they've made. No doubt about it, Holly. Been very impressive. What Coach Banghart has built for UNC. Meanwhile, Beckers now with four blocks today. Adding to her career high. Mule. Mule fading. No. Rebound, Donarski. Under five minutes to go in this fourth. Donarski at three is good. It's a 10-point game, and Connecticut needs a timeout. Nice job by Lexi Donarski in transition to stop and pop and get the three. Over five minutes into this fourth quarter, North Carolina has held UConn to only three fourth quarter points. Right, it has felt like the game is completely in hand for Connecticut after they built a big lead and because UNC has not been able to compile any kind of consistent offense, but it's very much still a game. 10 point game, 442 to go in the fourth. Connecticut in non-conference games this season and they played the most difficult schedule in the nation. Lost at NC State before they were ranked. Well now, NC State is vaulted into the top five. Beat Maryland, then lost to number two UCLA, and then lost to, at the time, number 10 Texas, who is now in the top five themselves. And certainly UCLA and Texas, in my eyes right now, are national championship contending teams. NC State still has some young pieces, but they have looked really good early this season as well. Connecticut has not scored in the last four and a half minutes. A 7-0 run from North Carolina that has been more like a steady job. Here's Edwards. She got banged by Gokdang. And the foul is called. Newell gets it into Beckers. Thought about the three. Oh, 
Oh, Beckers nearly lost it. Pen to shoot. Beckers over to Mule. Into the corner. Shade rims out. Real opportunity here for North Carolina. Down just 10. They're just 3 of 10 from three-point range in this game. Kelly separates. Left it short again. K.K. Arnold. Doing a nice job defensively. I think Connecticut needs to be aggressive. They continue to slow down the pace because yeah. they've got the lead, but I feel like that has taken them out of the off offensive rhythm they've had earlier in this game. Rebecca, it's such a great point. It feels like they've spent the entire fourth quarter trying to bleed clock. Edwards, back iron, no. I mean, and as a result, they've scored just three points. Five and a half minute scoring drought. Dockday. Center of the lane, Pivots gets denied by Edwards. Now to Donorski, she got it on a long two. It is an eight point game. Three minutes to go in the final game of our triple header. A 9-0 UNC run over the last six minutes. Connecticut has missed its last nine shots. And again, just taking a long time to get into anything. And part of that, this last possession was three-quarter court pressure by North Carolina, but not the previous possessions. Shot clock's down to six here. Arnold with it down to four. Arnold with it at two, gives it up. Edwards knocks it down. Well, that was the ideal scenario for Connecticut. Use the entire shot clock and finish it with a bucket. Usby dips in and finishes. Usby, the fourth member of UNC in double figures today. Buell finds Edwards. Good movement. Beckers won't take. Extra feed. Mule connects. Fourth three of the day for Nika Mule. And that was a huge one. And that's going to be a foul on Arnold. Just sharing the basketball. UConn moves it around, gets it to the middle. Pass, plus one, plus one, plus one. <laughs> that's how you keep everybody happy on an offensive possession. And when Mule let that fly, she actually had a pretty good contest from Gokdang. But still able to hit. Four threes, ties a career high for Nika Mule. Deja Kelly checks out for the first time in this game. Navarre dumps it to Mule. UNC turns it over. They've done so 19 times a season high. Mule now certainly going to try and run some more clock. And a foul underneath. That's on Gokdang. And she is fouled out. to like for Maria Gokdang today, though. Yeah, she gets a standing ovation from the North Carolina crowd. She certainly came out, played hard, was impactful, used her size well inside. Aaliyah Edwards misses the first free throw. Edwards scored just four points in the first half. Has nine here in the second. Another double-double for Aaliyah Edwards, her second consecutive. Hits the second free throw, 124 to go. Connecticut lead is back to 12. Deja Kelly back in. She has been held to 5 of 13 shooting in this game. Kelly able to separate from Ewell. Navarre. Navarre on the spin, lays it in beautifully done by India Navarre, under a minute to go. Some pressure from North Carolina. Arnold able to break it with Paige Beckers. <laughs> Not keeping her feet in bounds. 
on the midcourt line. Edwards finishes. That should do it here in Connecticut. Edwards, a big second half, 12 points since halftime. Rebound to Beckers. Two second difference game and shot clock. What a performance for Paige Beckers. 26 points on 11 of 14 shooting. A career high four blocks was all over the floor. Edwards has the pass deflected. Gets it back. And a shot clock violation. 2.3 left. And that will do it. Connecticut handles North Carolina. 76-64. The final at Mohegan Sun. A huge game from Paige Beckers. And Gino Oriama's squad improves to 38 and 1 all time in this building. From Connecticut trying to chart that path to a deep postseason run despite all the injuries today, a performance to build on. Playing with a smaller lineup, Paige Becker's at the four spot, sometimes the three, the two, and the one, and coming through with the victory. And sometimes standing right next to Holly Rowe. Well, Paige, an incredible day for you today. You tie the fastest to, to get to 1,000 points with Maya Moore. What does that mean to you, the kind of legendary UConn star? Yeah, I mean, Maya's one of the GOATs, so to be in that space, it's just amazing. It's just a, a testament to all that my teammates have done for me, all that my coaches have done for me. I'm just a product of what they do for me, so extremely grateful, and it's an, an honor to be next to her. You know, it's really something because you have missed a lot of time, too, to do it, but tell me also about your deep and your resilience today. I don't know if it was the shooting sleeve or what, but I, I felt like I was just trying to contribute to winning any way that I can. And I feel like if I play hard on the defensive end, stuff goes better for me on offense. So just trying to set the tone for what our team needs to work on and what our younger guys want to follow. Um, and just giving it all on the defensive end because that sets the tone for our offense. Thank you so much and congrats. It's nice to see you back out on the court thriving, Paige. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Huge day from Paige Beckers. Huge day from our crew here at Mohegan Sun at a triple header for producer Kerry Callahan, our director, Mike Griffin, Rebecca Lobo, Holly Rowe, and everybody else at ESPN. I'm Ryan Rucco. Coming up next, it's Sports Center with the Cole and Max.